Welcome to the Farm and Home Show. My name is Colby Dye, and today we are visiting with Dr. Alan Fryer. He's a professor in the UK's Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences. And one thing we talked about with, with water and how it pollutes is, even though some people may not be able to see the water that's directly around them, they don't live on a body of water, near a body of water, pollution can end up in water from a very long ways away. And that's why we have a difference between point source and non-point source pollution. When we think about pollution, I think a lot of people probably think about point source pollution, which is, for example, a factory where a pipe may be ruptured or a leaking landfill or an outfall from a wastewater treatment plant. Um, and point sources are commonly regulated um, at the federal or state level. Um, so when we think about environmental regulations for water quality, we're commonly talking about point source pollution. But non-point source pollution is also uh, of concern, and it's something that can be found both in urban and suburban and rural or agricultural environments. And so a common way in which non-point source pollution is spread is through stormwater. And we think of storms, we commonly think of runoff where, for example, the rain falls uh, harder than it will actually infiltrate or soak into the ground. And so it'll start moving over the land surface. And as it does that, it can pick up different types of pollutants. So this could include um, nutrients. It can get nutrients from not only fertilizers, for example, but also from animal waste, from manure, on livestock operations, but also from pet waste. So good reason to pick up after your pet. And um, in addition to nutrients, some of the pollutants that are associated with um, animal waste include pathogens, um, microorganisms like bacteria and viruses and protozoans. Um, pollutants can include sediments. Um, so sediment itself can be a pollutant because it can cause what we call turbidity, uh, which is obscuring um, passage of light through the water. So you can imagine that could affect aquatic vegetation. If you get suspended sediment, um, that could be bad for aquatic organisms such as fish. Um, but in addition, uh, pathogens and nutrients and other types of pollutants can also adsorb onto the sediment. So the sediment um, not just the water that the sediment is in, can actually help to carry or, as we say, be a, a reservoir for these pollutants. Um, other things that can occur and that can absorb onto sediments include hydrocarbons. Uh, so if you think of gasoline or motor oil, for example, um, can include pesticides um, and can include heavy metals. So um, if you think of things like lead or cadmium or mercury, all of those are pollutants and they can occur as point source pollutants, but they can also occur as non-point source pollutants. And stormwater again can contribute pollutants both from agricultural um, operations as well as from urban and suburban settings like lawns, like parking lots, like streets. Um, one other type of non-point source pollutant, particularly in urban and, and suburban areas that I didn't mention that's seasonal, is road salt as well, that we put on salt to, to melt ice and snow as needed in the wintertime, and excess concentrations of salt can impact water quality as well. And so when we talk about the pollutants that are associated with nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen, um, those can cause issues such as taste and odor. So the water smells bad. Um, but in addition, they can also cause recreational or animal or human health impacts, uh, such as the water is not safe to drink. So we get eutrophication, which is basically like over fertilizing the water. Um, we can get harmful algal blooms, um, which uh, can occur in water bodies like lakes and streams. Um, and at kind of a large scale, we can get hypoxia. So seasonally, um, the excess nutrients that flow out of the streams in Kentucky and into the Mississippi River Basin wind up in the Gulf of Mexico and result in massive fish kills and issues like that. So there are a couple of sayings we have, you know, that everybody lives downstream from somebody else. And also, you know, what happens here doesn't stay here in terms of water quality. And I know Warren County, we have a hazardous waste uh, disposal day. So thanks for watching and have a great day.